So, um, can I help you? <laughs> the neediest dog in the world. What's going on, everybody? Another story time video. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm Taylor Swift right now with how many guys I'm talking about that I've dated, but um, I don't know. I feel like this was like my. This is like my first serious boyfriend. I don't know why I haven't talked about this. We dated for, I mean, not that long, but whatever. I was like 17, 18. For the purposes of this video, let's call him Tom Daly. How do I even meet? Like start talking on Facebook or something like that. He was super cute. And in my image of him whenever I met him was that he was this like super sporty, like, like the star of all these sports teams and stuff like that. And then like once I actually met him, I realized that I was thinking of somebody else, but like, whatever. He was still a really sweet guy. So um, I met him and uh, we like dated or whatever. And like, um, he actually had a girlfriend at the time and like continuously hung out with her and hung out with me at the same time. Like, well, okay, like not literally together, but like, you know, he would go hang out with her during the day and then like sneak away with me at night. It was really sweet. And I could like drive and he couldn't. It was so weird because, I mean, he was old enough to drive and his parents would never let him do that. Because that's what this is about. This is about his parents. It's like the first one of the first guys I like really like liked, and uh, with that liked me back. We both knew it. It's like we're real comfortable with being gay, whatever. And um, he would come over and hang out. We'd play video games and watch TV and other stuff. Like, somehow his girlfriend found out after a couple weeks of us dating that um, he was gay. I guess she saw a text message or something like that. I don't remember. And what did she do? She ran straight to her parents. I hadn't even hung out with their parents, like these parents, stuff like that, and they just assumed we were like, bros, what's up, bro? I'm like, I'm Tom Daly's friend. We're gonna just go in here and bang. I mean, it just blew up at that point. Whenever she told her parents, his parents, that, she, that he was talking to a guy because she was scared. Like, what a bitch, who would do that? I mean, I guess we were like kids, whatever. But really? They took his cell phone from him and like, through it, like destroyed it, took his like laptop and all forums of communication that he had from him, made him delete his Facebook, made him get rid of all these things, canceled his phone number. They took the door off the hinges in his room. So like he had no privacy. They essentially sent him to pray the gay away camp, which is ridiculous. Oh my God. This even happens. Regardless, that's for another video. After that, like, he dropped off the face of the earth. I think he was able to, like, call me right, like, right before he found out that they knew and was able to be like, I'm gonna be gone. They're gonna tear up my world. And so, um, he was gone for, like, three weeks. I, didn't, I mean, literally nothing. I, all I knew is that one of my friends that was friends with them told me that he was gone for a while and that I would hear from him as soon as he was able to. He ended up writing a note to me while he was in Pray the Gay Away camp and like came, like uh, one of his friends was allowed to go and see him and it was like his cousin or something like that and she brought me that note and it was so sad. It was heart wrenching. Anyway, the distance kind of made us like each other more, I guess. I mean, just this passionate, like, we're not allowed to like each other, but we absolutely did. As soon as he came back from Pray the Gay Away camp, he like was back in school. I was 17, so at this time, actually, so no, I was out of school, so I didn't see him at school, but he was at school. So like, there we would kind of arrange it to where he would leave school a little bit earlier, I would come and like, I know, it's terrible. Like, we would like time it, and we worked it out to where we would see each other at really weird times. I would go at, to his house and like loop around his neighborhood at like, 4 a.m. We would wait until 4 a.m. because we knew his parents would be asleep. And we would go and like um, swing on the swings of the playground or just drive around or whatever like that. It was insane. The craziest thing happened though. His parents were gonna like leave town for the weekend. And he told them, hey, I'm gonna be gone. We're gonna be gone for this weekend. Your grandparents are gonna stop by several times to make sure that you're not doing anything you shouldn't do. I mean, this was like months after they found out and we were still super panicked about all of this. So, um, can I help you? <laughs> the neediest dog in the world. After Gridley <laughs> He was able to like use his house phone or whatever. I don't even remember how we were talking at this point. I think his parents realized that he wasn't seeing me. I mean, he actually was, they thought he wasn't. And, uh, cause we were sneaking around so well and they like were slowly giving him some of his privileges back at no door. So we set up a time to meet and uh, I was gonna come over, he was gonna dinner, we were gonna have just like a normal night because we had never been able to hang out at like normal hour. I go to his house 
and he has some dinner all made and we're like watching a movie and stuff like that and I was like yeah you know he was like my parents are gone for the whole weekend so my grandparents are gonna stop by or whatever but um, like they're super chill and like I doubt they would even actually do it and we had dinner and everything like that we were sitting there watching the movie and we see headlights pull up past the, the house and we're like oh shit they tricked him to see if I would come over. Thank God I parked up the street so they didn't just see my car there and call the cops right off the bat. He reacted. I've never, like, it's real. Whenever you're in adrenaline, you like, boop, and like go to it. But it was just like a flash. And he grabbed like my shoes and my drink and like at my, my, sh my shirt that I had taken off. And uh, I grabbed all of that, handed it to me, put all of the dishes to where it looked like only he had eaten, um, moved, made sure everything was exactly right, grabbed me and shoved me in his closet. Back in the fucking closet. And these fucking Kim Davises made me get back in the closet. Whatever, whatever. So anyway, so I'm sitting in the closet and like he goes and turns the lights off and you hear his parents like storm in there and they're like, who's here? Who's here with you? Sitting on his bed, he had turned the TV on in his room and was watching something like that. He was like, uh, nobody? And they were like, Oh, well, we just thought that you had somebody over here. We decided to come home just because we felt like you were doing something that you weren't supposed to be doing. And they like, you could hear them actually kind of like looking around. I am like pooping my pants at this point. I probably pooped my pants a little bit actually. I don't have my shoes on to like hold my arms. I'm afraid to like sneeze because his parents are gonna hear me or somehow. He doesn't have a door in his bedroom. Like, what am I gonna do? So I guess he did have some form of communication. I think he had his some kind of laptop or an iPad or something like that. iPod, that's what it was. And he messaged me on Facebook chat on there and said, he was like in bed. This was like 20 minutes later after his parents had like said they were gonna go to bed. Which they did not, they laid in there and watched TV for a while. So like he texted me on there and was like, I'll get you out as soon as possible, but like hold tight, cause it's gonna be a while. I sat in there for three hours. Literally three hours later, I hear him like slightly open the door, open his window and I like, slither out. I'm like, ee, run down the street, barefoot, all the way up the street to where my car was parked at the gas station. I was so scared. At that point, I realized, okay, this is a bad idea. His parents could have, like, shot me or something like that. I don't know. In Arkansas, the laws are really weird. They probably could have shot me. And so, um, when I was a stupid kid. God, to top it all off, like, we, you know, we had realized that we were both going our separate ways and it wasn't working out just from the way that we were talking. Like, his parents were just completely keeping him from me and I didn't I always started college and didn't really want a boyfriend anyway. And, um, we were like, we were high school sweethearts, I mean, whatever, that's what you do. So um, we were actually on a hike and like we had snuck away during the day, someday we went on this hike. He and I were walking, we were actually sitting on a log. I was kind of sort of telling him how we were breaking up. It wasn't fully breaking up, but we were like actually in a kind of agreement that we were not gonna be together anymore. His dad comes running around the corner and is like, I caught you too. I see what you've been doing. I knew it. The police are here. So like, I was like, whatever. Like, we're not doing anything. Like, you can see we're clearly on a hike out here. He's like, at this point, I had turned 18 too. So that's a very important fact. I was 18 and he was still 17. Arkansas is legal, but he was, you know, whatever. So I get to my car and one of his friends, who was a police officer, was there in his car, the cop car, parked behind me. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna leave. And they were like, no, you're going, you're gonna get in trouble for this. And I was like, for what? And they're like, you're 18, he's 17. And I was like, um, we didn't do anything. Like, uh, I never did anything. I remember being, hanging out with a 17 year old is not legal. And then they were like, well, yeah, it is. And I'm like, all right, whatever. So eventually I like go, actually, I, they have me drive my car up to the police station. I'm like, they can't put me in the cop car because they'll get in trouble. They're trying, like, so eventually, Tom Daly's dad is using their cop friends for favors to try and scare me away from their son. We're breaking up already, chill out. So, um, I go up to the police station. My mom meets me there and like, they, like, my dad like calls our lawyer and it's like, you can't do this. As soon as I get up there, the, the sheriff of the town is like, I am so sorry. Like, we did not need you to come up here. Like, you are good to go. Like, 
forget it ever happened. Left and whatever, and that was the end of that story. But this just goes to show you how crazy some people are raised. These people are brought down pastor after pastor, pastor's son or whatever, and they never experience gay people. And if they do, they shun them out and think that they're these trash of the world. They don't ever give them a chance to learn about who they are, what they are. It makes me so mad. I want to stick all of those bitches in the Sept of Aelor and then Cersei so Lannister, those bitches. I'm gonna put all those religious nuts in little carriages that are carrying stuff into King's Landing and have Drogon on the, with Daenerys destroy all of them with their fire. I just have been watching so much Game of Thrones recently, so there are gonna be a lot of Game of Thrones references. And like, I want to offer tips. Like, I want to tell you what to do. And the thing is, wait. Just wait it out until you don't depend on it anymore. Then get the hell out of away from those people. Yeah, I think that like. It is our responsibility to try and encourage them to be more receptive of gay people and um, to like, I mean, to understand our lifestyle and stuff like that. But some people are just not gonna listen, and I'm so sorry to anybody that has to experience that. In any scenario, if that's your parents, like, it will get better. Okay, you will get out of there. Parents should love their kids. They shouldn't treat them any differently just because they're gay, and they don't realize that. So I get it. Not all religious people are bad, but it is what is making those bad people like have this thing that they can fight for and say that that's what they're doing it for. You know, like, not our religion is bad. New videos coming out soon. Hope you guys like these story time videos. Um, actually, I have a really cool video coming out in like two weeks with like a really neat guest star. So thumbs up if you like the story time videos. Subscribe if you don't already. And remember, never stop learning. Come on. God, you just did a mega leap. That was a mega leap. Yeah.